good evening dear students today we are going to learn about the remaining part related to the duties of registered medical practitioner and about the professional misconduct but before starting our lecture we will revise whatever the content we have covered during last three lectures in first lecture we have covered about the definition of forensic medicine and definition of medical jurisprudence what is the basic difference between the definition of forensic medicine and the medical jurisprudence so i'll revise it forensic medicine is the application of scientific medical knowledge in court of law for administration of justice and medical jurisprudence is the legal aspect of practice of medicine so basic difference between the definition of forensic medicine and medical jurisprudence is the application of the scientific scientific knowledge in forensic medicine scientific medical knowledge is applied where in a court of law while in medical jurisprudence legal knowledge is applied in medical practice so that is the basic difference so in first lecture we have covered about the definition of the forensic medicine and medical jurisprudence different acts related to the medical juris medical practice then we have seen the constitution of state medical council of maharashtra constitution of medical council of india now called as national medical council what are the functions of medical council of india what are the functions of state medical council then in second lecture we have covered out what are the rights of registered medical practitioner in third lecture we have covered some duties of the registered medical practitioner so today we will cover the remaining duties of the registered medical practitioner as after completion of your internship you will get the permanent registration number and after the permanent registration number you are called as a registered medical practitioner so there are rights and duties of the registered medical practitioner we have covered the rights that he can use or he can uh, write the degree in front of his name write a prefix doctor in front of his name he has right to get appointed in different government or private hospital he can issue different certificate he can act as a expert in a court so these are different rights of a registered medical practitioner duties of the registered medical practitioner can be divided into five broad category duties related in general duties related to the patient duties related in consultation duties related to the doctors to each other and duties related to the society in the last lecture we have covered about duties in general in duties in general we have covered what are the first and foremost thing that doctor should maintain a dignity of medical profession he should be sober modest patient prompt in delivering his duty and skill skill in art of healing i am repeating word skill in art of healing second he should do a good medical practice he should get registered to different medical societies like a physician society indian medical council a different societies he has to register according to according to his Uh, specialty after that he has to also do within 5 years 30 continuous medical education session so he should update his knowledge also he should keep records ipd opd perfect within 72 hours he has to give that record to the patient next general duty that he should always give preference to the patient irrespective of the religion politics and other things so in general duty at that 
he should maintain dignity of medical profession. Second, that the obligation to the sick, that even if he has right to choose the patient, but in emergency has to give the life saving treatment to the patient and after that he can refer to the patient to tertiary center or the patient. So he has to give the primary aids to save the life of a patient. Second, he should tell properly what is the prognosis, what is the treatment he has to give and when if you want to refer the patient, all these things should be clearly told to the patient. Next, important duties of a doctor related to the consultation. So if the doctor feels that the patient needs the further specialty consultation, he can refer that patient to the consultant. But remember, for the consultation, he has to give the priority that the consultation must be for the benefit of the patient, not benefit of a doctor. Then in consultation, there should be the punctuality. During consultation, he finds that something or he want to alter the treatment of a given prior doctor, he can alter that, but he should not discuss roughly in front of the patient. In consultation, after the consulting, he has to again refer the to the patient to the original doctor who has to send it. He should not take the charge of that patient. So during the consultation, all these minor things but play important role during the practice. So he should do the consultation whenever required and it should be only for the patient's benefit. So that is the important duties related to the consultation. Next is the important duty related to the conduct or important duty related to the doctors in bit their sense. Means if the doctor want to see himself a treatment of another doctor, another doctor should also treat him as his family member. Second, he should follow all the etiquettes and the ethics. If any doctor has referred as a consultation, then he should not do any comments about the referring doctor, about the treatment. That should be remembered. And it's very important ethical point. It will, if you create some loose comments about the referring doctor, the patient will lose the trust about the referring doctor. 